WWDC 2022 looks like it will finally be incredible. Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and WWDC 2022, or Dub Dub as many call it, is looking to be a huge event and one of the biggest in many years. It will be the first event in the past two years where developers, students, and media will be present in person, and also it's looking to be the most anticipated Apple event in quite some time. Now, back in March, we had a pretty good Apple event where we got a few surprises with the Mac Studio and Studio Display, but the big surprise was the M1 Ultra processor. This time around, we're expecting some surprises as well, since Apple has been able to keep things under wrap, it seems, even more than they have in the past. To start with, Apple has invited quite a few people, and those who go to the Apple event during WWDC look like they're going to get a tour of an all-new developer center and more, so they'll be able to check out Apple Park since they haven't been able to in the past couple of years. Now, Apple has actually been advertising WWDC like crazy compared to previous years. So this is one reason I think it's actually going to be a bigger event than many might even anticipate. So within email, you'll see it says one week until WWDC 22, and the font is a little bit different. There's seven different colors around it, similar to that again of the iMac, and it's sort of a newer tall font. We saw this in the March events invite as well sometimes. So that's something that's a little different. And usually if you read into these a little bit, it gives hints as to what to expect. So this person's face in their eyes, there's a reflection of maybe some lenses, maybe hinting at a new headset. We don't know that for sure. Of course, we'll have to wait and see, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. For those of you that don't know when WWDC is and you want to watch it live, it's on June 6th through the 10th, the whole developer conference, but June 6th is when the actual keynote is where we'll see the new versions of operating systems and more, and it's at June 6th at 10 a.m. Pacific time or 1 p.m. Eastern. If you watch it on YouTube, it will actually adjust to the region you're in so you can see when it actually starts. But you can watch it there, you can watch it on YouTube, Apple, Apple TV, and maybe even more. So it's really heavily advertised, and not only here in email, but also many have been getting invites for podcasts as well. So you'll see the Apple podcast you can listen to it in, and I've even seen advertisements on YouTube for WWDC. It looks like they're really pushing this, and they have quite a bit to share, it seems. Now, if we go to the Apple website and you go to the actual WWDC 22, you can tap on the person's face, similar to what we had in the email, and we actually have some playing cards. We can zoom in here, tap on them. They're augmented reality cards. They'll open up, and then we have some collectible cards. Let's see if we can change this here and zoom out a little bit. And we have some collectible cards. We can tap on the card and then see more information about what's on the card. So you'll see different cards here. They're sort of collectible cards and can change every time you go there. So again, augmented reality cards if you want to check those out. So go into another one and you can see more about it. So maybe some more about augmented reality at WWDC. Now, of course, we're expecting iOS 16 and it's expected to be a major update. And so we already had a preview of Apple's accessibility features that will be included in iOS 16. And they have a whole web page. I'll link that in the description, but things such as door detection for users who are blind or low vision, also advanced physical and motor accessibility for Apple Watch, Apple Watch screen mirroring, so you can mirror your watch to your iPhone and control it there, as well as double pinch, different gestures, things like that, live captions for iPhone, iPad, and Mac for deaf and hard of hearing users, as well as voiceover with new languages, 20 additional languages, buddy controller, Siri pause time, voice controlled spelling mode, sound recognition that you can actually train, and a major update to Apple Books with different themes and more. So. If you're going to be able to theme Apple Books, maybe you'll be able to do that with iOS as well. However, that part has not been confirmed. In addition to that, Mark Gurman is saying to expect a new lock screen with different wallpapers and widget changes, and then also, of course, new apps with different icons. And I've talked about some of this at length in different videos and improved health. And also messages is expected to gain more social network-like features. So whatever that specifically means, one thing I would love to see is the ability to delete conversations not only from my side, but their side as well, like you can do in Telegram or maybe on signal. Those things are really helpful and help keep things more private and secure even more than they are already. And so all of those things and more are expected with iOS 16. And I'll think, I think we'll see some surprises as well, maybe an always on display, but that's actually rumored to be coming for the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. Hopefully they'll bring it to different OLED displays as they're capable of it, 
but maybe they won't do it due to battery concerns. With iPadOS 16, we don't know a whole lot about it yet, other than that we've seen some patents for multitasking where it looks like we can change the window sizing, similar to what you can do on a Mac, and maybe have some better interactions with it. Hopefully there'll be some bigger updates where we can rearrange the apps, use more space more efficiently, and much more. There's even mention of a pro mode in some of the information or patents that state that maybe when you put your iPad into a dock, it would switch into a pro mode that would be more like a Mac. With the M1 inside of the iPad Pro, it's possible we have the power to run Final Cut Pro and Logic apps in the future, so I would love to see pro apps, but this looks like it's going to be a packed WWDC with updates from iOS to iPadOS, and also macOS 13 Mammoth is expected, and that is expected to have some new preferences that are going to sort of line it up with what we have on iOS. So what that means specifically is hard to say, but it looks like Apple is trying to make things more consistent across all of the different platforms. And if that wasn't enough, Apple is also expected to majorly overhaul watchOS with watchOS 9. So we're expecting a big update with watchOS 9, not only to health, we don't know if it's the interface or something different, but it looks like they're going to add quite a bit more to watchOS to make it even more useful and maybe some more information. So all of those things are expected as far as that, but there's also more updates as well. tvOS 16 is expected to get some improvements to the home app or home integration overall. However, there could be some big gaming updates as well, as Apple was recently in talks with EA or Electronic Arts about acquiring them, similar to how Microsoft was in talks or just recently acquired Activision. So we could see that with Apple TV and possibly with an AR or VR headset. Many are expecting Apple to sort of show Reality OS, which is the name of their overall operating system for the VR headset. And according to Robert Scoble, this event will actually be the first of three different events that Apple is preparing for the next year, introducing the world to augmented reality. So in a form we actually haven't seen yet with the, this first event being WWDC to introduce the development environment and sort of a photorealistic 3D scenes, avatars, and more, according to Robert Scoble. Then we'll have events later where they'll show the headset, maybe in January of 2023 and so on. So it looks like Apple could definitely show Reality OS this time around, and it's looking more and more likely as we've seen Apple register different names or have them in the code here and there. So it looks like Reality OS is a real thing, and it's heavily integrated into the code of iOS 16. Now, as far as hardware we do expect to see, many are expecting a new updated MacBook Air. I've talked about this in the past for quite some time, and it looks like it's going to get a full redesign where it would have seven different colors, similar to that of the iMac, have a larger display with a notch, MagSafe, and possibly an M2 chipset. All of those things are expected soon, and currently MacBook Airs actually have shipping delays where they didn't before. MacBook Pros, the 14 and 16, have been delayed for a while just due to chipset shortages, but the Air was not delayed, now it is. So it looks like we could be getting a new version very, very soon, and possibly a sneak peek of the new Mac Pro. Apple hinted at this in March, saying that was the last one they needed to show, that they would switch over to Apple Silicon, and we haven't seen that yet. So we're waiting for that, and hopefully we'll get a sneak peek of that as well, with maybe shipping later in the year. And so that's everything to expect from WWDC 2022, and maybe even more that we're not expecting. I'm expecting some big updates to iOS 16, and it looks like it's going to be an incredible WWDC. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Do you think we'll get a big update with iOS 16 or do you think we'll be disappointed? I know some people are very up in the air about it and iOS 15, while it was a huge update, basically iOS 13 and 14 combined as far as features, it didn't have a lot of physically facing features or visual features. So it didn't feel as big as it actually was, but it was a lot of refinements, maybe getting ready for iOS 16. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.